Here our military analyst Sean Bell is here with me now. Uh, very interesting, all of this, uh, isn't it? This appearing in the Sunday Telegraph a bit earlier, the paper rowing back a little bit, the Prime Minister trying to clarify things uh, for us. Do you think we'll ever see British boots on the ground in Ukraine? Well, never say never, Jonathan, but I, I think it's very unlikely we're going to see it during the wartime. That's pretty clear. I think the party conference season, there's lots of sound bites, interviews. That led to this uh, headline in the uh, Sunday papers where the forcing the PM clarification. It is worth noting, though, that the, um, the UK is very good at doing military training. It's done over 20,000 Ukrainian soldiers have received their training here, and they're probably going to go and do about 26,000 eventually. But NATO was very clear. They're not going to go into Ukraine and do the training there for fear of putting combatants on the ground, and that would risk escalation. Um, but, um, it, but the article, unfortunately, did prompt the former Russian president, uh, Dmitry Medvedev, to actually say that any British forces on the ground in Ukraine would be legitimate targets and also threatened that it was sort of taking the world closer to World War III. But behind the scenes, you know, it, it does make sense to move training closer to Ukraine. And I think what all of the parties are doing is looking at longer term, once the war is over, a bit like the F-16s, the Ukrainians will need to have their own national capability and the British forces undoubtedly will help with that but not today. Yeah, such a delicate balance, isn't it? Um, Grant Shapps also in the news today talking about defence spending. He was, if you remember, he has always been an advocate for the last um, year or so about going to 3% of defence spending. Today he announced 2.5%, which was an interesting roadback uh, particularly. But the NATO minimum is 2%, and even uh, Grant Shapps acknowledged that only seven nations out of 31 are actually meeting that obligation. Now, since the Russian invasion, that's been a wake-up call to the whole of Europe to increase their defence spending. And the critics of any increase in UK defence spending would say, hang on a minute, the war is happening in Europe, it's a lot closer to our European partners, if they're not paying 2%, we risk just being seen to subsidise them. Now, one of the reasons for doing it is that Russia has recently announced a massive increase, 68% increase in its defence spending. 68%? Increase for next year in defence spending. Uh, now, in context, that's still only 10% of the US defence spending. It's about comparable to the UK, less than 5% of what NATO spends. Um, the British Ministry of Defence has turned around and said that's because Russia's preparing for the long war. Might be true, but it also might be true that Russia's been decimated. Its military capability has been decimated. It does need to rebuild and recharge. And if it's lost 2,000 tanks, for example, each tank costs about two million. That's four billion just to replace the tanks. So it's no surprise that Russia needs to uh, spend a lot of money on defence. Yeah, and of course the Kremlin uh, will be pleased about events in Slovakia as well. Uh, elections uh, have been held there. Yeah, the pro-Kremlin Robert Fico um, has um, prevailed in the polls there. It's worth noting that Slovakia is a NATO member, so it all seems a bit of a strange story. But Fico campaigned on the back of uh, saying that Slovakia would stop supporting Ukraine um, and. Uh, they, but today, they've been very fierce advocates. They've provided a lot of aid, a lot of military uh, aid as well. And most importantly, they've opened their borders to the refugees pouring in. All of that, though, has had a, a bad effect on their economy, and that seems to be what Robert Fico's ridden. But it is worth noting, he only got 23% of the vote. He's a minority party, therefore they'll have to have some form of compromise coalition. That will involve compromise. Um, so let's see what falls out. But the key point, as you say, this is the first real sign of uh, cracks appearing in what's previously been very strong NATO unity. Yeah, that uh, coalition being thrashed out. We're speaking to a journalist from Slovakia a bit later on the news hour. Sean, thank you very much.